Hello and welcome. As you can tell by the title, I'm the Obsessed Movie Man, OMM, and, as you can probably guess, I'm reviewing Hobbit! Yeah! Sorry, I'm just I'm a big Peter Jackson fan, and I've now become a big J.R.R. Tolkien fan. I, Any magazine I can find, I'm now buying. Don't, don't judge me. And, or judge me, whatever. And reread The Hobbit just for the heck of it while reading Return of the King at the same time. So, I'm, I've been, for the past few weeks, um, really excited and pumped up for this movie. And what do I think? I think it was pretty awesome. I really enjoyed this movie a lot. So, let the review commence! It's, so it's basically the same story as the original Hobbit. We have Bilbo Baggins, who's thrust into this adventure by Gandalf. Into, well, he's thrust into an adventure with the dwarves led by their leader, Thorin Oakenshield. And their adventure is to reclaim the kingdom of Erebor, which was taken by the dragon Smog. Also, there's like other subplots that are put into this movie that were not necess not really in the book. Like, we have Thorin's grudge with um, this one orc named Azog, which I don't believe was in, which wasn't in The Hobbit, but I think it was mentioned somewhere else. Um, they also, this was, well, this part was kind of hinted at in The Hobbit. Um, we have the subplot of Sauron rising again. It, I think he, in the tower, I think he is in Dol Guldar. I think that was, that's what it was, the battle? I don't know. <laughs> but we, so we have that. We have the White Council, which is basically, which is Saruman, Galadriel, Elrond, and Gandalf and talking about Sauron coming back. But yeah, let's talk about, let's just talk about the movie. I like how they set it up. We have old Bilbo Baggins explaining the history of Erebor. And by the way, there's, that, that actually brings me to a lot Brings me to say there's a lot more CGI in this than I think the other Lord of the Rings. I'm pretty sure of it. Because, well, it kind of pains me to say this, but Erebor really did look like a soundstage. And I guess that's because they wanted it to make really, they really wanted to make it look distinct or like it's underground, but it just really looked like a soundstage to me. Anyway. I like how old Bilbo is telling the story, and it's actually the same day as his birthday that you see in the Fellowship of the Ring, because they show Frodo. Frodo and Bilbo are in the same clothes, and Frodo is leaving the door, and Bilbo's like, where are you going? He's like, oh, I'm going to go down the road. I'm going to surprise Gandalf when he comes down here. So it's taking place the same day. Kind of cool. Not sure if it was needed, but what I was thinking the whole time was, oh my gosh, Frodo, you look older for some reason. <laughs> no, I was... whatever. But Martin Freeman... I want to talk about Martin Freeman as the new Bilbo. Funny as hell. Loved him. Uh, he came, He's really polite, just like as you'd expect Bilbo, but he also is temperamental. Like, he gets frustrated with all the dwarves coming in. He doesn't want to be part of the adventure. Um, a lot of the, the lines are exactly from the play that I was in, so I went to see it the day it came out with my the with my cast and we were just quoting along with the movie it was really great so um anyway a good job martin freeman i he is actually how i pictured bilbo baggins when reading the book it was great i i'm looking forward to seeing him in the next two parts also returning cast for um elijah wood he actually did a good job even though it was really minor Christopher Lee, oh my god, I'm such a Christopher Lee fan. I wanted to see more, but that's probably going to be safe for part two when they try to drive the necromancer out from Dal Guldor. I think that's, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Dal Guldor. And, and we had Kate Blanchett returning, beautiful as ever. Um, Hugo Weaving playing the wise Elrond, and of course... Andy Serkis, who also is, I think, the second unit director of this movie. But a Andy Serkis as Gollum. Why hasn't Andy Serkis gotten an Oscar yet? I'm not sure if he has or not. I don't think he has, but someone give him an Oscar. If, if 
not for Gollum, at least for the directing, because I love how this movie was directed. It looks... All the characters have unique personalities, like the dwarves, which um, I was nervous about. I thought that... Because you have, I think, 13 dwarves. Let me see. 13 dwarves? Feely, Keely, Owen, Glowen, Dwalin, Balin, Biffer, Bofer, Bomber, Dory, Nori, Ori. Yeah, 13 dwarves. And, by the way, I think Biffer and Ori were my favorite dwarves. Balin also, but I really liked Biffer the most. Or was it Bofer? Oh my gosh, I don't even remember. I don't even remember. I know who, I remember who Ori is, I remember Balin and Dwal, I remember the others, I can't, I'm just trying to distinguish Biffer and Bofer right now. I think Biffer was the one with the axe in his head, or maybe he wasn't, uh, whatever, but that's what I was nervous, I was nervous they weren't going to have distinct um, characteristics, and it was going to be hard, like, most of the time the audience would be like, who's this guy, who, but no, you could kind of... You know, they establish a majority of the dwarves, and I'm sure that in the next parts they're going to establish the other ones. Like, um, yes, it is Bi It is Biffer. Um, Biffer is kind of the real, he sounds Scottish or Irish. Um, he's kind of the joke, the jokester of the group. Um, you have Ori, who is kind of, he was the youngest one who uses a slingshot, and if you look in the background, he's, like, drawing and writing. And that was a characteristic of Ori in the book, and I kind of like how they show that, that in the background. Um, Bomber, of course, Bomber's the big, fat, fat one. And Dwalin is, oh my gosh, Dwalin, who has these big tattoos on his bald head. And so, <laughs> so great. Dw and Not Dwalin. I said Dwalin. Balin is the one who, who's really old and wise. They, they ha and Feely and Keely, you can't forget the two sexy dwarves that you're ba that they basically threw out there that who are basically really young, like youngsters. I think they're sort of supposed to be the Merry and Pippin of this group. But I like, and Thorin, really great job. At this, really great job. I liked him so much. He's, he he looked like a true leader, someone that I could follow if I was if I was a dwarf. Well, I already have a beard starting to grow, and I'm not that tall. No, I'll, I'll stick with being a wizard. Oh man, the brown. Oh no, it's, the brown is already taken. Radagast the brown is in this movie, and I love this guy. He wasn't in a Hobbit, but I love how they set up this character, how he talks to animals and everything. Great job, even if it was a minor role. And the dogs in the background are going off because I'm talking about Radagast, who is an animal lover. I think I should also talk about what I was... what uh, Another thing I was nervous about. I was nervous about how they were going to present the... How they were going to present the movie, like what the tone was going to be. If they were going to try and make it serious, like the um, Lord of the Rings series, or if they were going to go with the lighthearted nature of The Hobbit, but in this, they kind of, they mix it. So, like, you have the songs, and things are really funny. Like, you have the trolls that talk. Oh, my God, the trolls were great. And and the great... Oh, jeez! Um, oh, my gosh, I forgot his name. I think it's Humphreys, who plays the Great Goblin. Funny as all hell. Just... <laughs> Love that. He's like this giant job of the hut kind of thing, and he's just singing, singing, and he's just like, I can't do it. Um, love that also. But I was nervous about the tone, and I like how they mixed it. It, it is serious, it has its serious parts, and but it also shows the lighthearted nature of the original Hobbit example, how they do the songs and everything. Like they're singing in this. They have the That's What Bilbo Baggins Hates song when they're cleaning up. They have, um, the of course, the Misty Mountain song that you guys have heard about. Um, the Goblin song is in it briefly. Um, it's it's really nice to hear some of, of Tolkien's songs put into this movie. And um, any deviations from the book, mostly it's just some of the stuff that's added in, like Radagast and the Necromancer and the White Council. Well, Necromancer was sort of in The Hobbit. But, oh, I, I do have another one thing to 
to bring up. This is kind of a nitpicky issue. And I'm hoping someone can explain this to me. I'm, hope, I'm hoping there's a Tolkien fan out there who can explain this. Um, from what I, from what I read and what I understand in the movies, the Nazgul, Ringwraiths, Black Riders, whatever, there are are not truly dead. They're undead, right? Okay. Well, in this movie, this is not really a spoiler. As I actually was expecting this for some reason. I don't know why, but I was. I was expecting oh, is there going to be a um. Uh, Na Nazgul cameo. Yes, there is actually. Um, Radagast goes to Dol Guldur, and the apparently the ghost of the Witch King attacks him, and the White Council said he died years ago. He was buried in Dol Guldur, or he was buried long ago with the Morgul Blade. I'm like, wait, how is he dead? Because if I remember correctly, no living man aside from a woman, can kill him. So, that really confused me. It was cool to see, but um, also, I should rep I probably should talk about the 48 frames per second, which was how they cha they made this movie, they had 48 frames per second just to decrease blur, blurry motion in the film. Um, I'm still... I'm still wrapping my head around, or around around the whole logistics of why they used it. But for I didn't really notice it. I'm it's weird, right? I didn't really notice it. It just looked like a regular movie to me. Maybe I don't know. I didn't notice it, so I don't think I should talk about it. Some people are divided on it. Some people like I I've been seeing other people's response like, and Peter Jackson has said, well, people need to get used to it. Um, Maybe I didn't see it at 48 frames per second, because I went to a very um, small theater. Maybe they showed it at 28 frames per second. But I didn't notice it. And I think the one piece, another piece of criticism I have is the orcs and goblins. Um, they're not all, like I loved in the original Lord of the Rings, they were all in um, bo full body makeup and everything. But a lot of them now are CG. <laughs> Like, I can understand the goblins, because I think they're supposed to be different from the orcs, and they have really good designs, like the Grey Goblin and everything else, so I was okay with them. But, like, there's some, this Azog, the main orc villain who's uh, hunting uh, who's hunting Thorin. He looks like an avatar, sort of, for a, like a, a Navi. And he, I, don't, I didn't understand why they... And there's all in the same scene. I think there's also an orc that's in full body makeup. So I don't get why he's not. Uh, uh, in, I don't know. He just he didn't look that real to me. And that's kind of weird when you have also one of the greatest CGI characters, Gollum, in this. And oh my gosh, do I really need to talk about how amazing Andy Serkis is as Gollum and how Martin Freeman was like? Especially, I loved that. I that's my favorite chapter in the book, by the way, Riddles in the Dark. But I love how it's set up, the how Bilbo and Gollum meet and how they're talking to each other. And you do see the aspects of Smeagol. This is sort of a Gollum we haven't really seen before. I would like to say that. Like, he's more vicious than playful, but you do see the playful Smeagol side a bit. It's kind of hard to explain, but... Um, you'll probably get it, but like, I was... Wondering if they were going to mention, because I don't think in the book he, Bilbo actually says he's from the Shire. So I was wondering if the, he was going to say it in this movie or not, because I was always thinking, how did Gollum know that he was from the Shire? But whatever. So Andy Serkis, Martin Freeman, Ian McKellen, Christopher Lee, Hugo Weaving, Kate Blanchett, Elijah Wood, and all the dwarf actors, I tip my hat off to you. You did a fantastic job. I really enjoyed this movie. Um, I'm dying to figure out what you guys thought. I can't wait for the second part. I hope the trailer comes out soon. Not sure what to expect from the third part, but... Oh well. <laughs> this is OMM signing out. Go see The Hobbit.